Dan, aka The Boogeyman, and today uh, I will be doing something a little bit different. Usually what I do on this show is I will do a review of a movie, either an old classic or a new release, tell you what I thought about it, Tell you, uh, give it a rating out of 10, tell you what my thoughts were, good and bad, and whether I think it's worth a watch or not. Again, you'll see uh, if you're on the Patreon that I did a video uh, before this, and I was in a completely different space, um, I've had a little bit of a jig around, as it were. Uh, I've tried to create a little backdrop in space uh, to be able to do some videos. And um, this is going to be recorded on video and on podcast as well. Um, this backdrop will get better and better. But yeah, here we are. I'm going to start doing videos alongside the actual podcast as well. Um, but on today's episode, I want to talk about something a little bit different. Um, and my bonus episode before I uh, talked about um, 90s movies and what happened to horror in the 90s. And it seemed to have a bit of a downward spiral until it got picked back up uh, by Scream. And today I want to talk about something along the similar lines that uh, every single horror franchise probably ever has had to deal with which is fatigue, and specifically sequel fatigue. What do I mean by sequel fatigue? So let's get into it. Let's actually talk about what all of that is. So first of all, we kind of have to look into, well, what is a sequel? What defines a sequel? And my opinion of that is it's a continuation of a character's story or a plot line from one movie or story to the next. Characters need to be the same or storyline needs to be the same. There needs to be a connection between the first and the second in some way. Um, the reason why I say this is because it's slightly different to a franchise rather than a sequel. Say a franchise, let's look at Marvel right now. The Marvel Cinematic Universe is its entirety a franchise. You can have an Iron Man standalone film and a Thor standalone film and they're not sequels to each other but they're set in the same universe. It's a franchise, but then you can have Iron Man 1, 2, and 3. They are sequels to each other. And it's a continuation of Iron Man's story, but Thor is not necessarily a sequel to Iron Man. However, it's set in the same universe. That's a franchise. But a sequel, Iron Man 1, 2, and 3, is a continuation of Tony Stark and his particular story. I th that's how I see it, okay? Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's how I see it there has to be a connection in some way to the previous story and it's not just set in the same world per se there has to be a character continuation or story continuation something that's what a sequel is horror movies i think more than any other genre are packed with sequels um just in thinking off the top of my head let's 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 face it straight away halloween nightmare on elm street the exorcist friday the 13th even films like Ghoulies, Hellraiser, Leprechaun, they all have a lot of sequels. Not just one or two. There's always there's at least four to five on all of those franchises. Um, because people want to see that storyline continued or see those characters carry on. And that's great. But and, and in horror, it's really easy to do. You can create cheaper, quicker movies. There's a turnaround in horror movies that is different to, like, say, action movies or sci-fi movies. It's a lot easier to knock out a sequel. And there's a few reasons for that. I mean, sequels in general are a lot easier to do uh, financially and time-wise than a new IP. And the reason for that is because you've already got established characters. You've already got probably actors and people who are involved in that. You've already got a style and a structure. So you can, you've got all the basics already there, ready to go. So you can just knock that out. You can get someone to come in, write, write a story for this, use these characters. I want it to start here, end here. And that's what Hollywood does. Uh, or they will take a script that has nothing to do with these characters and find a way to shoehorn them in. They did that on the Hellraiser movies so many times it hurts. Um, but that's something that they do. So... When we look at sequels then, why do we get fatigue? Because we want to see these characters. For example, Nightmare on Elm Street, one of my favourite franchises. And it is a franchise, I have to say that, however these films are sequels to each other, bear with me. Um, 
and the sequels there's many as you know there's uh one two three four five and then we've got freddy's dead and then we have a gap and then we have um Wes craven's new nightmare and then we have the awful remake and we've got freddy versus jason um so we've got all of these films there's many of them um but why do they stop then if people want to see them why do we stop going to the movies to see the characters that we like and that's where sequel fatigue comes in and we actually look at this phenomenon and it's not even a phenomenon it's it's a simple thing that happens to all of us and um, we've always heard the phrase too much of a good thing i think in movie terms that's never a standing there's always if it's good we want more and that is where the fatigue comes in sequels never ever seem to capture the quality and the the imagination of an original and sometimes they sometimes they do very rarely let's talk about alien and aliens aliens recaptured that essence of the franchise and of the first one but took it to another place and this is what i'm going to get to later when i'm talking about sequels and same with friday the 13th number one and two it actually built upon what was there before and uh, i think you know after two and um, there are some much more improved films than the first the first works alone as an amazing slasher however jason voorhees is not in it the introduction of jason voorhees improved that franchise vastly and proved those sequels so sitting there and saying that you know the first is the best well the main thing that people like about those films is the character of jason voorhees so maybe the sequels improved upon that first one that's one a view that i have it's my opinion um yeah, if you've got a different opinion please let me know and how tell me how you feel about it um however what happens then because we want to see these characters we want to see jason killing people we want to see um we want to see freddy krueger enter people's dreams and come up with incredibly inventive ways to kill his victims so why do we get fatigue on these sequels and it comes back to what i said before of quality and improvement one thing that happens with sequels is the quality will dip because they want to knock out a quick sequel they do a spec script that they turn into a sequel um, or they just don't put as much effort in they reduce the budget so they, they can't do as much as they did in the previous one so the actual quality visually may drop as well um, and there's all these things that happen but let's talk about those things now why does it happen in the first place so we as moviegoers want to see our favorite characters over and over again but one of the things that happens is the quality dips and i've just given a bunch of examples of why that might happen so we get lesser quality films we get um we get um Dr dream master you know we get friday the 13th part five we get halloween six we get we get leprechaun in space <laughs> and we get this drop in quality because uh, film companies film production companies get lazy and get greedy and instead of thinking they, 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 want, they want to create a quality product what they decide to do is they decide to create a quick product something that they can knock out release in a year you know around halloween time or whenever the the window of release is for the horror films and they just want to get it out as quickly as possible and sometimes it falls to the detriment of that quality drops so people get bored of going to see these lesser quality films when you create a sequel it has to build upon the first if it doesn't build upon the first people don't want to see a third 
or a fourth or whatever. They don't want to see it carry on because for them the story is over because it wasn't as good. It wasn't as compelling. It doesn't make them go, I want to know what happens next. So we get that drop. But what else can happen? Well, there's other reasons why quality will drop. Like I said, budget drops will happen. Now, budget drops can happen for a couple of reasons. But the main reason usually is greed. <laughs> Let's face it. Um, production companies want to release another Nightmare on Elm Street film. They want to release another Hellraiser, but they don't want to put the budget behind it. They're scared of the investment return. So they don't put as much effort in. Therefore, the quality drops. Um, and so you can see that on the screen. You can see the quality disappear. And that, again, it puts people off. We get bored of seeing these characters. We get bored of seeing something that isn't as good as the first. How many times have you gone to see a film and gone, oh, I wasn't as good as the last one. It wasn't as good as the last one. And if it doesn't make money, we don't. It won't get more. But it doesn't make the money because people don't go see it. And people don't go and see it because it, word of mouth is a huge thing. If I go and see a movie and I say that it's, it's, it's not very good, I know some people will listen and, and not watch that movie. And it's a shame, especially with horror, and uh, because it's a lot easier to make sequels, that studios don't invest. Look at the quality of Nightmare on Elm Street, the first one, compared to number six. Freddy's dead. The money isn't there. The effects are cheap. And it, it destroys the franchise. It destroys the sequels. And it's, it's saddening because we want to see more of this. For example, like, it's obvious that we want to see these characters because we watch these films over and over again. We dress up as these characters. We go to conventions and meet these actors who've played these roles. We are invested in them. But if the quality isn't there in the story... People don't want to know. So people get fatigued. They get bored of seeing the same thing over and over again, but not as good. Or they get bored of seeing the same thing over and over again. This is something else that happens in sequels. Instead of doing what I said before, building upon what was there before, like they did with Friday the 13th Part 1 to Part 2, where they took the idea of Jason Voorhees being alive and then introduced him as a killer, brought him in as a character, a fully fledged character, um, they get lazy and they'll go, okay, what? we'll just do the same thing again. Take uh, take the blueprint, take it, okay, let's make six new people to get killed. Um, let's just do it vaguely like it was before. Oh, it's set in a summer camp again. Oh, it's set in a mental asylum. Oh, it's just, the, you know, um, another house that has decided to install security cameras and the spooky things start happening. I'm talking about paranormal activity. Um, and it's just a repeat. Well, why do you want to watch the same thing again? If I want to watch the same thing again, I will watch the original film. Or I'll watch the ones that I enjoy the most. My favourite, Friday the 13th, is part six. Uh, Jason Lives. I absolutely love Jason Lives. But the reason why that film, in my opinion, is so good, that is the turning point where they said, okay, the Friday the 13th films, they are getting a little bit goofy. Let's lean into that. And the director and the writer really leaned into that. They made Jason Zombie Jason. He's now an indestructible killer because he was officially dead. Um, they brought him back. He was stronger. He was better. Um, they put all these different characters in and all these different scenarios, but they made them humorous in some ways. There's the scene where Jason slams a guy's head against a tree and it comes away, and there's a blood splatter and a smiley face carved into the tree. Nailed it. They did the James Bond intro where it zooms into uh, Jason's zombie eye, and it kind of it, uh, he walks onto screen just like James Bond, and he slashes the eye, and the titles come up. It is building upon what was before and leaning into. Okay, let's go. We're not taking it too seriously anymore. We will take it seriously, but we'll comment on it and we'll have fun with it. And that's something that the Friday 13th franchise really did well with that film. 
And I love that film for that. It's entertaining. It's not the same thing repeated at, like exactly. It's taking it and putting a twist on it and creating it a more entertaining film. So what happens when people then write sequels and they go, well, let's do more of the same. We will then create boredom because I've seen this. This is nothing new to me. So people, again, you get fatigued, you get your sequel fatigue. And there's other things, again, that will create sequel fatigue. And one of them is oversaturation. So let's talk about the Saw franchise for a moment. Saw, the first Saw, original Saw, original recipe Saw, <laughs> um, is a fantastic movie. It is incredibly well made. Um, it's incredibly well written. The second one, also a good movie. Came out, I think, two years later. The third one came out a year later. And that happened. That kept happening for a good few years. The reason why that is, is because the, produce, the production company uh, who created Saw, Twisted Pictures, uh, I think it's Lionsgate, is that? Uh, I'm off the top of my head. Um, decided to make the Saw films a yearly release. So what happens there? They get rushed out. We get a new one every year and it's oversaturated. We get six in the space of eight years. And we get like, oh God, I've seen so many of these. And there's no kind of tension or build up or curiosity for the next one. So it just becomes like, I oh, bang the next one out, bang the next one out, bang the next one out. And you go like, okay, I've seen six of these now quite quickly. Um, I'm a little bit bored of that. So people want to go see something new. So there's this fine line of making sure you get the release timed right. So you don't wait too long for the next one to come out so it's not in people's minds anymore. But if you rush it out and get one out every year, people are gonna get fatigued by that. Case in point with Marvel, that's happening right now. You know, they, the first few phases where they built up, they did one, a couple of films and they just teased it and they just built it slowly. And what they did something like, was it 10 films? And then they did the Avengers or something like that. Even, maybe even less than that. I think it was 10. And they did the Avengers and then phase two, phase three, and they, they, they built and built and then but more they started quickly releasing more films each year more fi- and then in Endgame it was this big huge deal and then since then not only have they done films they've done like loads of films a year when they were before they were doing like one or two a year at most they're not they're, they're doing a bunch of films each year they have done a series like three to five different series they've done spin-offs they've done all these things that they're just, they're just oversaturated it. I think they even put a post up that said something like, phase one, 10 hours something minutes. Phase two, this many minutes. Phase four or five, what the fuck we're in now. Like it was something like 72 hours, blah, blah, blah. And it's not even finished yet. It's like, that is way too much content for people to consume and stay interested. Um, so you get bored. You get bored of it. And that's another thing that happens with sequels. If you rush these things, people will get fatigued by it because they've had too much. Um, And again, like I said, if it's too much of a good thing, you're probably going to be all right. But if you're pumping out mediocre quality because you just want a yearly release, people are going to get bored. And that brings me to the last one, the last point, which is veering too far from the source material from the original what can happen is people will tend to go see a film and they get attached to a certain character or they get attached to a certain way of film uh, the film goes we know what to expect roughly but we want new things around that we want interesting ideas around the the basic outline um but uh, something that happens in filmmakers is they decide they don't want to go down that route anymore or someone new will come along uh, who's going to make this film and they don't have the same vision as the original person. They said, well, I don't like that aspect of the original. I don't like that aspect of the last sequel, so I'm going to change that. Um, case in point is what happened with Nightmare on Elm Street 1, 2 and 3. So number one, Wes Craven had this particular idea. You know, he, Freddy attacks people in their dreams and if he gets attacked in their dream, they get attacked in the real world. Okay? Fairly simple. 
number two brought the idea that Freddy could come into the real world and there's a scene where he is literally in the real world um, manipulating things around him and to and uh, he's terrorizing a group of kids at a pool that didn't line up with the original concept and people didn't like that but the film made enough money to case to allow them to make a third so when they did the third they went back to the original idea but they built upon it Wes Craven came in and helped write the script they didn't take all of his ideas but he helped with the story and the script and number one and number three feel like sequels to each other number two just feels like another film with Freddy in also number two is the one of the most gay icon horror films of all time fight me because it is <laughs> if you don't agree you're wrong it is a gay icon film just trust me if you don't want i'll do an episode on it if you want me to let me know below if you want me to do an episode on, on a nightmare on elm street 2 talking about you know the the very not subtle gay overturns <laughs> um and i will um but yeah so all of these things lead to sequel fatigue um it could be one or many of these things happening in one franchise um, for example, I don't think the quality dipped too much in the Saw films, but because um, they were banging them out all the time, people got fatigued by it, and then they had to keep coming up with ideas, and it, it did slip near the end, because they rushed themselves. Um, the, the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise originally, um, it's because it was just rinse, repeat, and it got a bit silly. It, it not even like good silly. The, the films it's themselves slowly started to veer away from the scares. And what they actually ended up with is <laughs> Freddy using a power glove to kill someone in a Nintendo, um, which is just daft. It's, it's not good. But why did that happen? It's because they decided to aim Nightmare on Elm Street to kids because he, came, he became quite an icon to kids. Um, what happened to the... Friday the 13th franchise, the Friday the 13th sequels. Well, what happened there is they decided to put less and less budget into the films. How many times can someone come back um, and be killed in the same place? Uh, people would just stop going there. So they did. They came. They tried to come up with new ideas when they came up with like Jason Takes Manhattan, but they put hardly any budget behind it. So it lacked. It's it slipped. They couldn't really do much with the concept. Because they didn't put the budget behind it. Um, and then look at the Hellraiser films. The Hellraiser films started to dip. Because after the third. They stopped writing specific Hellraiser films. They would find scripts. And find ways to shoehorn. Um, Hellraiser storyline in. To shove Pinhead in there. And they, again they changed Pinhead. They took him from this menacing demon creature to a pun king because that's what they thought that's what people wanted and people didn't want that from pinhead so it slips and it lacks these are just a few examples a idea of a franchise changing and doing it right is the evil dead franchise they nailed it on the head when it came to the sequels one the sequels were years apart they weren't banged out right after each other two they took what was good about the first one and they built upon it. And the second one is incredible. It took that little bit of a com more com comedy aspect, but it kept up with the gore and the scares and built upon that Ash character and the way Bruce Campbell portrayed him. They're like, okay, let's build on that. Let's build on the, he's a bit of an asshole, but he's cocky. And at first he's like a bit, he's not so good at this hero thing. And he builds and, by the third one, he's a cocky son of a bitch. They reduced the gore, but they increased the comedy. But it, it's a, it felt natural. And they also then took that idea of him not only being cocky, but being a bit of an asshole. He's not exactly a like... Ash isn't actually a likeable guy when it comes down to it. You know, he's the guy that you'll like for about half an hour and then probably have to be around him all the time. You'll probably think he's a dick. Groovy. So there's all this stuff that they did, and that was a, a really good franchise. I mean, the first original, it's a trilogy, and they kept it that way. And they didn't bang him out year after year. And it works. However, 
You've got other franchises that just kept trying to knock more and more out, but they didn't put the budget behind it. They didn't take the time to really see what made those originals good. So the public gets fatigued and they want something different. However, we do hanger for those originals. So that's when we get reboots like the Scream reboot and the Halloween reboot or requels, let's call them. Um, that, but that, a requel itself, again, is a good idea and concept. Take what was good, the original, or however many far in that you get, and build upon that, and take your time with it. And they really have nailed it with the Scream franchise. I'm, like, I think it varies from in quality a bit from I mean, with five and six, but they have created entertaining films and they're films I will talk about eventually. Um, but you know, when you watch Scream 1 to 4, you can see a steady decline in quality. With 5 though, that quality increased again. And I think with 6, a lot of the concepts were built upon from 5 that built it better. Unfortunately, I'll get into it another day, <laughs> but that is a really good one. And we're hungering for those films again because we're getting good quality and we're getting storylines that we have know but are being built upon in new interesting ways. But that is sequel fatigue. That's why people get bored of franchises. That's why they disappear. There's all this background stuff that we don't realise is there. A lot of people get blame the directors or they will blame, you know, society or they'll blame that people aren't going to the cinema. But what they're really missing is the fact that all this stuff is happening behind the scenes that is directly impacting the sequels, which then has a knock-on effect to us not enjoying the stories as much anymore. So we stop going to see them. Anyway, guys, this has been another like uh, editorial essay, video essay, as it were, on another subject that I have had in my head a long time. So, yeah, sequel fatigue. Um... I hope you enjoyed this, guys. If you liked it, please leave a like or a comment down below. Uh, any films that you would like to see further sequels of, or you know, any films you want me to talk about, I Friday Night uh, <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street too. Um, if you want to support the channel even further, guys, you can share it on your social media. Uh, I am on Instagram at boogie underscore man underscore dh. Please come and drop me a follow. Come say hello. You can email me at the on the bearded horror review at gmail.com and uh, if you really want to support the show there is a patreon now available and, and i linked it down below where you'll get extra content where like more videos like these uh podcast episodes and um even access to a discord server and maybe even a shout out on the show where you can ask me a question and i'll read it out to you um but yeah thank you so much for watching guys and until next time happy watching <laughs>